Welcome to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, created and hosted by Scott Knudsen, to explore the crossroads of horses and business. Now here's your host, Scott Knudsen. Hello and welcome to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, Scott Knudsen. Thank you so much for watching our podcast on one of our many platforms. And thank you so much for listening to us. out. If you're out in California on NBC affiliate KCAA, we appreciate you listening. And thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel, Cowboy Entrepreneur. Today we have a part one and a part two we're doing. And I'm so excited to get to do it with these guys. Um, Scott Robinson is on the phone on, on the show today. He's a founder and the CEO of Camp Cowboy and his son, Lane Robinson, who is the director of Camp Cowboy. And I met these guys. I was at the ranch and just had a wonderful time. And, and I couldn't wait to get this to the Cowboy Entrepreneur audience. And, and Scott and Lane, thank you all so much for joining us today. Let's Appreciate play. it. Pleasure to be on here. Oh man, we're going to have a great time. I can't wait for the stories and all the great work you do. And, and so, so Scott, when, when you were growing up, so where did you grow up? How'd you grow up? Did you always want to be a cowboy? Man, it, it, not at all, actually, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Western Colorado in a small town, Durango, Colorado. Um, never rode a horse other than seeing horses and cows in the past year, but, uh, uh, didn't have any plans of being a cowboy till later in my life. Um, um, pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. I, I went to uh, grade school and high school there. My, my parents thought I needed some reformities. So uh, they sent me to New Mexico <laughs> Military Institute in uh, Roswell, New Mexico. And that's the actually the very first time I ever got on a horse. And that's a funny story in itself. Well, let's hear it. Let's go with it. Well, uh, at the military school, they have a bonfire. You know how like Texas A&M has a bonfire. And I was a, a what you call it, squadron commander. So kind of like a battalion commander there. And uh, they wanted to light the bonfire one night. And so the cavalry, we have a horse cavalry detachment at the school. Um, they had horses. And because I was a squadron commander, they wanted me to ride up when they were getting ready to light the bonfire on a horse, you know, kind of make it a you know, hoopla, you know, something really good. Well, I'd never rode a horse before. Well, when I rode up on this horse, and, and I remember the horse's name was Peaches. <laughs> I fear of a horse. <laughs> of course. But uh, so I rode up on a horse named Peaches. When we rode up on the horses, the you know, everybody got all excited and my horse got scared and turned around and jumped a little fence. I let go of the reins and just held on to the saddle horn. And I rode down Roswell, New Mexico, down the main street of Roswell, New Mexico for about two or three blocks, just holding on to the <laughs> saddle horn, you know, holding on for dear life. And finally, one of the guys of the horse cavalry detachment chased me down on his horse and caught me. And I was like, thank God, you know, I didn't get hurt. And nobody got hurt. But uh, that was my really first experience of riding a horse. And it, it wasn't very good. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And now you have Camp Cowboy, you and Peaches and Roswell, New Mexico. I just, that's awesome. Man. That's a great way to start the show. That's how Oh my goodness. Yeah. Horse so is it, it, oh my goodness. So, so is that where you're, you became in the military? Did you come right out of college, yes. out of the Institute and go into the military? Yes, sir. I went to high school there. It's a, it's a, a private high school and it's a junior college and I got my commission. Wow. Uh, 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 junior ROTC, I would say, did the ROTC, and then I did the junior college um, course, and 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 got an early commissioning, and so then I finished my degree at University of Colorado. But uh, that's where I got my my military start. Actually, there's stories behind that itself. But that, that's awesome. So, what branch? Would you mind just talking about that? Like, what branch and what all did you do? And Man, I, I've heard some of it, but it's I, incredible. Years, uh, I started off as a special forces officer. And, and uh, finished as an acquisition officer. So uh, I did infantry in between there. So I, I did a little bit of everything. I did 23 years and retired uh, in 2011. Wow. That's so awesome. Well, thanks for your service. And yes, uh, did you travel a bunch there? Or did you I traveled all over the world, man. Uh, you name it, I've probably been there. But yes, sir, I, I got traveling in over the years. Very cool, man. Very cool. So, so, so Lane, so growing up in that fan, in the family and, and being part of the cowboy, I know, I know Scott's taken on a big part of it, but you are as well. And what's that like growing up on the ranch and kind of a little bit different. So he wasn't wanting to be a cowboy and you kind of grew up in it. Well, um, you know, that's kind of what, I, what I've known from a young age. I mean, I was kind of put on a horse. Uh, I know, there's there's VHS tapes of me probably six months to a year old on, on horseback. This is actually an old horse we had named Sandy. I love it. A fellow named Les Hood. It was a pretty neat horse. But uh, no, I mean, 
between you know my both my parents being on deployments or other things like that it's just the ranch has always been here it's been something i've kind of had to step up and and get a hold of whether it be running a crew of people or gathering cows or whatever whatever it is and uh it's always been a way of life for me that i've, I've really enjoyed you know it's been a real blessing to be able to grow up this yeah time. absolutely well, I'm just, I was wondering if your first horse was named Peaches. I didn't know. <laughs> well, personally, we call it a horse named Peaches, but I hear stories of this real big old um, draft horse cross that they used to run over cows with when they take them to team pens named Peaches. You know? Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. God, that's what I've heard about anyways. Oh man, we used to have a Clydesdale and his uh, hooves were like, you know, plates, you know, just huge, but just gentle as could be. Well, fast forward from the peaches and the cab day. So, you know, I met my wife in the military. Uh, she retired as a colonel. Um, she was a nurse and we were stationed in Hawaii. When we we're in Hawaii, we had jet boats and, you know, uh, jet skis and we did diving and we did all the stuff. And then we got stationed at Fort Hood, Texas. And we said, what do people in Fort Hood do? You know, what do people in Texas do? What do Texans do? I said, well, Texans have horses. So I went down and, believe it or not, traded a couple rifles for a couple unbroke horses. Had no idea what I was doing. Um, and my wife was, I think, nine months pregnant with Lane when I got these horses. And uh, I started trying to train them myself and realized that they were not very good. And I got thrown on my head about 50 million times. And, and a good friend of mine by the name of Sean Kelly kind of had, had mercy on me and said, come out to my ranch and let me teach you about horses and teach about riding and teach about training. And, and that's kind of how I got started. That was back in 96. And, and Boy, since howdy. eclipsed into a ranch life. I, I love that, man. I love how you just immerse yourself in Texas too, man. Just started getting some horses and, and uh, actually knowing what the dirt felt like, you know? <laughs> More than once. More than once. Yeah, I understand. Um, so, so, so you went out and you started, you and your wife, did you start and say, Hey, we want to start, get a ranch. We want to start a ranch. How did the, the camp cowboy start the ranching part, the land part? Well, so I got horses. The first time I was in Texas was 96. We, we got a couple horses and then we moved to Fort Lewis, Washington. And I actually bought a small ranch that was next to a cutting horse trainer, a reigning trainer and, a, and an English trainer all between all three. And so oh, I wow lot with them and getting better i guess i i guess i wasn't very good early on but i got better and then i started competing in working cow events and team pinning and sorting and my neighbor was a cutter so i got to do a lot of turn back for him and i kind of got excited about that and i actually started actually riding a horse pretty decent um then we got the opportunity to come back to fort hood texas when i moved back to fort hood texas i bought the the ranch that i'm on now and, and i built an arena and, and i wanted to find partners to team pin and sort and do that kind of stuff. So I do, started doing practice team pinning at my ranch on every Friday night and uh, awesome. in hopes to get me a really good team. I had a great team in Washington state, but I wanted to get a really good team out here in, in uh, Texas. And one person came up to my ranch one day and said, Hey, uh, uh, could I keep my horse? I'm like, what do you mean? Can you keep your horse at the ranch? I'm like, yeah, can we board our horse? I'm like, what exactly is boarding? I really didn't even put two and two together. They're like, can we wow. pay for a horse here? And I'm like, yeah, I sure can. So that kind of evolved into building more pins and building a better arena and building round pins. And we started boarding some horses here. And uh, so that kind of got the ranch solidified and having horses. Um, my job at the time was working at Operational Test Command, which is at, uh, right next to Fort Hood's, just right next to the ranch. Um, and at Operational Test Command, I tested out a, a lot of new weapon systems and technology for the military. I had a great job, one of the best jobs I think you have in the military. And uh, during 2004, 2005, we had a lot of soldiers coming back for the Warrior Transition Unit. They were coming back to Fort Hood. So these soldiers would live in the barracks, and they were going through their medical appointments to figure out if they're going to transition out of the military or stay in the military. So I started bringing a lot of those soldiers over to Operational Test Command and, and taking a look at new technology. said, hey, you know, you, you can't be in the fight back here because you're hurt, but why don't you come look at some new technologies and give me your feedback? And they liked that and gave them a sense of purpose and, and, and motivation. And then I started inviting some of those same guys to the ranch and they came out and, and, you know, first they shot bone arrows or they looked for arrowheads or they drove a tractor. And then we started putting them with horses. And as soon as they started putting with horses, it really clicked. It, it, it did a lot of healing and it made sense. And, and we saw the attitude, attitude change and we saw guys move in a positive direction. Um, so fast forward a little bit. 
um, I got a guy named Tony Cole came out there, and you'll meet him probably some future episode, but he came out and, and started working on the ranch as a ranch manager. And uh, Senator Susanna Hupp came out and said, boys, you've been bringing a lot of veterans out to your ranch for years. Why don't you guys make this official, set up a curriculum and set up a program. This, this equine therapy is for real. And we knew it was for real because we've been doing it for years. So uh, we, we put that thing together. We set up a curriculum. Um, we got some neat helpers early on. Larry Mahan, Cowboy Hall of Famer, gave us some great, great advice and donated some horses to us. And, and uh, we, we, we fumbled through the first couple classes, but we put a, together a great curriculum and a great class and, and got it started. And that's how it got started. It's about seven years ago, I think, when we got it started. I love it. It's such a strong program. I mean, you can just feel the, um, the power when you're there in the healing, it's just, it's, it's a great feel. And, and then Lane, you're the director. And you know, when, it, whenever we were out there, you're really kind of putting everybody in the right spot on the right horse. And would you talk a little bit about that? What you look for and, and, and with, and how you match up a certain horse with a certain person? Well, so as far as students go, I really don't believe that you, uh, you know, there, there's certain horses that are kind of a little bit more pulled back or reserved, uh, a little bit more more skittish, and I try to match up people just the same. However, uh, on my teachings at Mayhem's place, uh, you know, every horse has a different feel, and so approaching each horse differently, I try to I try to kind of rotate my students around with each each one. It develops a different feel and shows them something different. You know, they've got to be able to adjust how they work with one horse to the next horse to the next horse, and uh, it it just makes for a good. Um, a, a good all-around development of their horsemanship, you know. No, no horse yeah. is the same, just like no yeah. And, and you, oh. no, you're right. And you and you worked on um, Larry Mahan's ranch for for a while, didn't you? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I, I'm supposed to be going back up there sometime in the next couple of weeks. I'm go up there, trim a few horses for him, hang out, kind of brush up, ride a little bit with him. It'll be it'll be a neat deal. But no, I, I worked with him for. Oh, a little over a year, year and a half, something like that. He had had a few different ranches, and then he had a big lease down in Kerrville, Texas. So everything from moving ranches, gathering cattle on twenty five thousand acres, it was a it was a heck of a deal. That's that's so great, and I guess you would when you're working with like someone like a Larry Mahan and with those kind of horses, that quality horse. When you bring that back to the ranch, it just kind of somehow flows, you know, organically to your students. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, Larry, Larry's big on, you know, um, kind of quoting up, quoting folks. And there is a, an old English trainer named Jimmy Williams. He's like one of the English greats. And, uh, I guess that when he would drive around at shows, he had this little golf cart and a big old bumper sticker on the back would say, that would say, uh, the important things in life that I learned are the things that I learned after I thought I knew it all. And, uh, you know, when I went and signed on for right me, and, um, you know, I thought I was pretty salty, little little cow book. I thought I knew how to break bolts pretty good, and I could could rope pretty good, good as well. And uh, you know, Larry's got seven, or at the time he had like 76, 77 years of, of working with horses and rodeo behind him. And I thought I was pretty salty. And come to find out, I had a lot to learn, and uh, it it just yeah. you know, kind of became a sponge up there and learned a lot, and. Uh, I mean, I'm sure my students probably get tired of it because I'm mayhem this and mayhem that. If you if you ever sit through one of them, <laughs> you're going to hear a lot of, you know, back at Larry's or it, life according according to Larry. You know, um, but I, I really took to heart a lot of the teaching uh, teachings I learned up there. It's a, a good way to go about horse coursework. And uh, man, I love that. Uh, I love that. So Scott, what was it like when do what lane? Oh no! I was, um, <clears throat> I said I've never met somebody in their life that cares for their horses as much as that man does. I mean, is Larry Mary Hen? Yeah, you know they they say a, a horse needs three things to to survive: food, water, and shelter. But there's a fourth thing that uh, that Larry would always talk about: it's unconditional love. He goes, M most people don't know that in the capacity for people, let alone for their animals. And he goes. But if you give that fourth thing to your horse, he goes, you're going to have something that really goes an extra mile for you. And you can see it's evident on all. Man, I love that. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that, man. That's that's strong right there. And I 100% agree. 
um, they're always there, you know, that's the way we make our living, you know, or part of it now and, and, uh, just love it. So Scott, um, and Lane, when we come back from break, I want to hear like kind of how, how you, you move, you transition from a working ranch, you know, with cattle and horses and to the project and to Camp Cowboy. And I know there's so many people watching now that want to at least try and do something somewhat like what you're doing as far as just helping veterans. They want to do the right thing. And um, I'm excited about that and hearing more stories about everyone who's helping you. Perfect. So we'll be right back on the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show with Camp Cowboy. Scott will be right back with more. Hi, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. Hello, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I want to tell you about a product I've tried and I love and I feel the Cowboy Entrepreneur audience will as well. It's Rebellious Infusions. Rebellious Infusions, there are little packets of flavor. And you know, it gets hot in South Texas, over 100 degrees every day. And I like my water, but it's water. So I use these infusions, put them in my water. It makes it cold. It's great flavor, zero sugar, zero calories. It's pure energy infusions, rebellious infusions. Go to drinkrebellious.com or on all social media platforms, Drink Rebellious. Hi, welcome back to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, Scott Knutson, here with Scott Robinson and Lane Robinson of Camp Cowboy. And first, I want to congratulate you. I, I, I see Performance Horse uh, Magazine, and you, you have a great article in there about the camp, and, and people can read it if they just go to performancehorse.online, but you can also subscribe and get it in the mail. But there's a great article about you and, and uh, about the camp. And and Lane, would you talk a little bit about your social media so people can find Camp Cowboy, whether they want to donate or if they um, they might have somebody that might benefit from it? Absolutely. So you can find us at campcowboy.org on Facebook for Camp Cowboy. And then if you got Instagram, you can reach out at Camp Cowboy 2016. Um, I think those are the only uh, awesome. we have, I think, a TikTok and a Twitter, but I don't um, not familiar with those ones. Yeah. Well, your website is great. It's so easy to use. And, and, and Facebook is fun to follow because you do get to see the ranch life and the cowboy life and some military stuff. So it's, it's awesome. And I follow y'all for sure. Um, so, so Scott, let's talk a little bit for everyone that wants to do something for the military or maybe that wants to start a nonprofit. How did you start such an amazing uh, company? Well, it, it's uh, not easy to get started. We, we fumbled a lot and we probably didn't do Everything right. We probably did a lot of wrong, but we I think we're learning from our mistakes every year. Um, um, we had a nice accountant get our nonprofit set up for us, which was was uh, um, her all doing. I didn't do anything, but it, I guess it wasn't as easy as, as you think it is. Um, and then finally, just get a little bit of money and, and things to start. A lot of it was pretty uh, cost intensive early on to get everything started, but it was, it was well worthwhile. It, you can't spend enough on on saving people's lives and helping people out, so you, you really just can't do enough. So, uh, it didn't really matter getting started, but the first year we, we were kind of operating on fumes, I guess you'd say, 
Uh, we had a lot of volunteers. We had a lot of guys that were doing a pro bono. I told you, Tony Cole came out here and came out here and was working as our ranch manager. And he just donated his time for Camp Cowboy and, and as an instructor and head instructor. And, and uh, like I said, the first couple of years we were on fumes and just everybody was volunteering and doing what we could to get it, to make it happen. Man, I, I love that. I love it. And I love the cause. And, and uh, Tony had a great background, too, I believe you were yes, telling sir. me. Yes, sir. Tony spent, uh, shoot, 19, 18 years in the military. I believe I believe he has, uh, and I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but I think he's got five Purple Hearts. Um, very decorated guy. Uh, incredible warrior. Everybody that I've ever talked to him, you know, that spent time with him in combat has just sent praises of him and what a great warrior he was, what a great leader he was, and great non-commissioned officer. Um, everybody sings praise of him, and he takes that leadership that he learned in the military and brought it to Camp Cowboy and, and really got us off the ground. If we didn't have a great, so uh, great early on, he was our first director. He really got us to a, a great point. And, and, uh, and he, he started us on that upward, upward scale. And then since then we've had a few other people come in there. Katie Stam came in after him and she did some great things. And then Lane came in and then came back out and then came back in. So it's, it's great to have Lane back because, uh, we've just get, been getting better and better every year with the group that we have and having Lane and his experience and what he learned from Larry Mahan and, and the combination of all the great volunteers we have come out here. It's just incredible. Yeah. That, that's so great, man. And it's, it takes a strong, you know, tip as a spear, so to speak, you know, it takes y'all's leadership to help these people and, and, and these students, you know, that deserve it. And also at the same time, you're helping all these great horses and you got your cattle business and the ranches. Industry. So, um, it, it takes that. So what was it like? How did you get your first student? You know, Tony, I uh, brought some, Tony, uh, was doing a lot of stuff for the first cab association and the lo local VFW. And, and when we told about the idea, Tony, just through word of mouth, brought some, some guys that actually really needed it. We had some, some guys that had some pretty severe injuries that were, were missing some limbs and some, some speech problems and been hit with IEDs and some PTSD and, and uh, they were our first group that came in, the first group. And, and we, like I said, we kind of fumbled through our curriculum. We fumbled how to, to, to figure it out. But by the end of it, we figured it out. And, and everybody, I think, gained a tremendous amount from it. But the, the first one was just word of mouth. It was kind of friends of Tony knew that needed some help and brought them in. Um, wow. Since we've started this program, and it's kind of a, a interesting thing to talk about, but we've had 15, and we keep a count, Lane and I keep this count, and, and the other staff. 15 people have come through the camp and said they wouldn't be here today if they hadn't gone through the camp. They're at that point. Amazing. Here's a 22 a day of the military soldiers. And but there's 15 people that wouldn't be here today. Um, it, and they verbally told us that. And we don't, you know, talk about who they are specifically, but we keep that track. Which to me, if you save one, you say, you say, you know, the whole camp is worth it, but we're up to 15 right now. Um, some Incredible. statistics, um, I work with a company called M42, and, and they, they help us out. And they're doing a lot of AI data for the military, and they're doing AI data. And they've come up with three things that keep soldiers from committing suicide. And two of them I got right away. I, I, I got it. One is, 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 do they own a dog? Uh, and if they own a dog, they, you know, the same thing Lane was talking about, a horse, unconditional love, you're taking care of that animal. Two, do they, are they in and around horses and, or animals? So I guess horses, equine therapy and having a horse or access to a horse. And the third one completely blew my mind. I wouldn't guess this at all, but access to a boat. <laughs> if a soldier has access to a boat and can get out on that water and I guess have that serenity, um, it keeps them from, from committing suicide. The Rashans came up with that statistics through their AI, and I believe all three of those. So we're doing our part with equine assistance, and, and I think we're making a difference in a lot of people's lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and when I pulled up at the ranch, uh, when I was there, it was still, the sun was coming up and y'all had a fire outside and Lane was there and there was some of the students and sitting, standing around the fire, just talking. Would you talk a little bit about that lane and maybe the importance of that? Oh, no, I, absolutely. So the, uh, you know, probably that, that first 30 minutes of class every day is probably one of the most important times of class. You know, a lot of guys went, went or guys and gals, when, when they get out of the Army, they kind of lose that um, that camaraderie they have with their battle buddies. You know, they, they've got these people that they go through their career with. That they're going to PT, they're going to formation, they're going to all these things. Well, as soon as they get out of the Army, they lose that. And these guys are there every day in and out. And so a lot of people are kind of drifting when they get out. And 
when, when they come to Camp Cowboy, they may not have served with, with the people that they're going through class with, Heck, maybe not even the same time or era, or, you know, branch, or MOS. However, they get here, and they have like-minded people. And just sitting around, having a smoke and a joke, you know, uh, just t talking with talking with their f fellow veterans. It, it's, a, it's a community, so it kind of turned into a big fraternity out here because we've got so many people that, that have come through the program and that continue to come and give back. So I, I think that first 30 minutes, though it's not really horse related, it's just kind of bringing people together. Um, that's probably one of the most important times of every day. You, you, and it's a really neat dynamic to, to watch when, uh, you know, the beginning of class, everybody just kind of stands there like a, like, almost like a, a junior high dance, you know, people with their hands in their pockets. And, uh, they're not really, not really want to talk like to each other. But then as the class goes on, you know, if one person's missing, everybody else in class is like, oh, well, well wh where's George at? Oh, uh, we don't know. Somebody call him. We figure out where, you know, and they all just kind of start, start pinging. And so by the end of the class, you know, you've got this really tight-knit little group, uh, uh, a little family. And then <clears throat> going into the next class after that, they come back and give to the next line of veterans, and it just – it's a it's a really neat cycle of people just coming back and giving back and and kind of paying it forward. Man, I, I love that, and you could see that. Like uh, you know, I didn't even go near the circle. It looks special, even just driving in and and uh, just seeing that um, is so strong. And and you could see the camaraderie of the of everyone that was there that day. Everybody ate together and helped each other and inspired each other, encouraged each other when they were working with horses. Yes, sir. Oh, without, without a doubt. Let's go. Yeah. So, Scott, you were talking a little bit about some of the injuries um, when the students come in and how you fix them. And when I was there, we were talking that some, you know, with the brain injuries, you're using new technology for the military. Y'all are trying and you're using all this new new ways to heal. But it also goes back to the horse. Would you talk a little bit about so, that, Scott? So we've had some very interesting sponsors. Some of the NFL guys have come down and we've got quite a few NFL guys come uh, through the camp or visiting the camp for the day. Um, these gentlemen brought a, a, a device called Brain Light Pro. It promotes, uh, I guess, brain or blood flow to the brain. Um, some of the guys that have um, traumatic brain injuries have tried that and used that. Uh, I think okay. that's it. There huh? it is. We we have a, a company that gave us some stuff called Sarah Gold, and and uh, it's it's a brain nutrient that we've given to different people. We have a, a encapsulated oxygen. A company gave us uh, at a Baylor University that I met up at Baylor University. And we've had some great, great strides with that for, for blood flow and brain injuries. We got a track chair uh, donated by uh, Georgia Florida Line, the band. And we've had some amputee guys that actually can't get up and get around or paraplegics that have been out here. And we can actually strap them in and they can stand them up like they're actually walking and put them in the round pen and work a horse. Um, Baylor, some gentlemen at Baylor University gave us this thing called the chariot. And the chariot's basically a motorized horse. It does all the actions of riding a horse. And we put different ventures on that may, can, maybe can't get on a horse, but we can put them through the whole exercise of a horse, turn it on. They can do the walk, trot, and lope all on the horse. So we have some pretty neat things that people brought to us in the past and that were still used uh, for every class. Man, that's so incredible, man. It, it's so incredible the power that y'all have to help uh, these students, you know, which which they deserve that, you know, and y'all are actually doing it. And, and I can't thank you enough for that. Um, so, so what's it like whenever you see one of your students, Lane, come in and, and they're, they don't talk to anyone. They're kind of reserved. They don't really know anything about the cowboy life and, 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 and he steps foot on the ranch. What's that like, that transition? Well, you know, um, it's not one that you notice overnight. Um, mm -hmm. but you can kind of really pull yourself back and look at, you know, day one to day 90, you know, I've been doing this. Since, since 2019, um, I start started on when I when I took over as director in 2019, I think. And uh, no, but I've I've seen countless students come through that you know they'll, they'll come in and sometimes whole classes where they just don't want to really talk to anybody, don't really want to. They're you know, like, I don't know about this whole horse deal. They're not too sure, you know. It's a 1,200 pound, you know, fur ball that wants to. In their mind, beat beat them up, and uh, right. 
And then they eventually they, they figure out that horses have a mind of their own and they've got to got to work with it and and settle down whatever's going on in their heads to get into the head of the horse and and just just the uh, at the end of the ninety days a lot of times it's a completely different person. You know, I, I I've seen yeah, folks I, I love that. They, they get out of their truck the first day they got here from too many people being here to they come the day of the graduation, they're the life of the party and there's 200 people here. Um, it's just absolutely day and night, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde difference. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of. It's incredible, man. It's incredible. And Scott, you were talking. So would you just talk a little bit about how long the classes are? And I know that you have leadership classes. You also have the camp cowboy and just kind of just phrase it up on, on what, what programs are out there. So we, we do three 90 day camps a year. Um, a spring, a summer, and a fall, and then we'll do a kids camp cowboy in the summer. We'll usually do one or two, depending on on the time permitted. And then we we try to take the camp cowboy group to different events. We've gone down every year and, and supported some gold star events down near San Antonio, and we try to just do local community. We go to local rodeos, local schools. We've been to local VFWs. Um, we we try to do a little bit of community outreach with our horses too, with former students. Um, our motto is make a difference every day. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. But uh, if, if you make a small difference in somebody's life, whether it's just compliment them on their car, hey, you took care of your car or you look nice today or you engage somebody, it, it truly makes a difference. And I always teach the beginning of every class, if, if you make a difference every day, and I use the Walmart, uh, I go to Walmart and the poor lady's, you know, going through the checkout line and she's checking a million people out. And she's just having a you know mundane day, and, and I usually ask her you know, to look for a name tag, and I was like, "Is your name Francis?" And she's like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Francis, they told me out back that if I talk to you, I get the good looking over fifty man discount." And she looks at strange <laughs> look at her face, and I'm like, "What?" I was like, "You don't give the good looking fifty men, oh, you know." <laughs> uh, you know that lady went home to her husband and said, "Man, some chubby old dude asked for a good looking man discount." But it, it, it had a little levity in her life, so. If you make a small difference in life, it makes a difference. So I challenge every student at the very beginning of the class to make a difference every day. Get up that morning and figure out how you can make a difference. It could be a complete stranger. It could be a fellow friend, somebody in your class, a family member. If you can make a small difference in somebody's life, you're better off for it. And and that's our motto. And then so when somebody goes through the class, most everybody that goes through the class comes back to the next class and acts as an assistant instructor or support group for the next class. So it kind of perpetuates itself over and over and over. Man, I love that so much. And it applies to people that even aren't students in your, in, in camp, you know, everybody should be doing that. That's just a great philosophy. It's a, it's a, it's just great. Um, we're going to, I can't believe the time is going so fast. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back with Scott and Lane and find out about some of the other people that are volunteers on the ranch that help when people come out, when the students come out and I met so many great people there. I want to talk a little bit about them and, and uh, I can't wait to get back from the break. So we'll be right back on the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you for listening to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Scott will be right back with more. For more information on Scott Knudsen, the Cowboy Entrepreneur, visit us online at cowboyentrepreneur.com. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Heard on KCAA, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. 
You can order these coffees today by going online to javacowboy.com. That's javacowboy.com. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to javacowboy.com to order your coffee today. Hello, I'm Scott Knutson, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I want to tell you about a product I've tried and I love, and I feel the Cowboy Entrepreneur audience will as well. It's Rebellious Infusions. Rebellious Infusions, there are little packets of flavor. And you know, it gets hot in South Texas. It's over 100 degrees every day. And I like my water, but it's water. So I use these infusions, put them in my water. It makes it cold. It's great flavor, zero sugar, zero calories. It's pure energy infusions, rebellious infusions. Go to drinkrebellious.com or on all social media platforms. Drink Rebellious. Hello and welcome back to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Whether you're listening to us on KCAA out in California, our NBC affiliate, or watching our podcast on one of our platforms, we appreciate it. Please don't forget to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel, Cowboy Entrepreneur. Today I'm here with Scott and Lane and we're talking and, and Scott was just talking about their, their, their saying, make a difference every day. I want to talk about two things I picked up there real quick and then we're going to go back into the camp. The, this wristband here, which is campcowboy.org. Please hit their website, look up everything they do, and it says make a difference every day. And then I also got this, and I love this, and, and Lane gave me this. It's, it's, it's just so special to me. It has American flag on one side and Camp Cowboy, and it says make a difference every day. So they truly live by this. And, and it means a lot for, for, for guys and, and ladies to stand behind what they say. And, uh, Lane, I cherish that. I, it's above my desk every, every day. I see it when I come in the office. So um, I appreciate that. And. Would, you, would y'all mind talking, or Lane, since you work really close with the volunteers as far as with the camp, about some of the guys and, and gals that help you? Oh, absolutely. So a lot of the people that help out have gone through the program through one regime or another, whether it be with Tony Cole as director or Katie Stam or myself. Um, just have been affiliated some way, way, shape, or form and decided they wanted to come and give back to the program. Um, you got folks like there's uh, Leland Loy and his wife Dana, where Leland was part of the uh, <coughs> horse cavalry detachment out on Fort Hood, and they got deployed to go and more or less put a whole uh, a program together for all of Saddam's horses, a breeding program for these uh, Arabs with lineage tracing back you know thousands of years. There, I guess that you know. In the, in the Middle East, they're, they're pretty particular on, on Arabs and, and uh, I guess, long-distance racing and stuff like that and the bloodlines. And so that was a pretty pretty big deal to see, you know, American troops going over there to mess mess with horses. You know, first really like – First at all. Oh, no, a- absolutely, yeah. And uh, Leland's just an absolute wealth of knowledge. Um, him and his wife have both come, come through the program under my regime and they're uh, – Every class we go through, you know, they're here every single day, showing up early in the morning and trying to help out with new students. And any days that I'm gone, there, uh, Leland usually kind of spearheads a lot of uh, help, help, helping out getting the class organized and stuff. You know, an old sergeant. And uh, <clears throat> and you got got um, uh, another one of our students, Joe, that he grew up on the Ponderosa, you know, and so. Where they filmed Bonanza, yeah, yes, sir. yeah, and so he, he grew up as they were filming Bonanza. You know, it, I, I think it was right before Christmas. He was talking about they had this huge snowstorm, and uh, his they ran out of firewood, and his dad just got fed up with a Christmas tree being in the living room, and just went and stuffed the whole thing in the fireplace. You know, a fireplace <laughs> that almost. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just. Neat little stuff like that, you know. You've got all these all these different people coming from all different walks of life. That you know, they're they're obviously qualified because they've come through the program, they've learned it, they've seen what it can do for them, and then they pay it forward by coming out here and and helping out other people. And it makes my job a lot easier because I can go, you know, rather than me having to jump around from student to student to student, I can bring everybody in in the morning and say, "All right, this is what we're doing today," and assign a student instructor with each student and say, all right, guys, 
go forth and excel. And then I can just kind of go over there and check the boxes and spot check everybody. And, uh, you know, and they're, they're already with somebody who's already done it. Not only have they already done it, but they've already kind of walked through the shoes of the people that are, that are going through the program, whether they, they have anxiety, PTSD, uh, traumatic brain injuries, different things like that. You know, all of my students have kind of gone. Well, gone I appreciate through. you saying that so much. And, you know, I, I remember everyone you just said, and, and they made such an impact, you know, when I was there and my wife and I, and, and uh, you could see the passion in their eyes uh, about Camp Cowboy and how they took it so serious. And, and they watched everything. As long as they were talking to us, they were still watching the students. And, and oh. I love that, how they, they feel a part of it. And, and uh, it's, it just goes to a credit back to what Scott started and what you're continuing to build. Hey, Scott, we, oh, got a, it's not we, have, we have a great staff out there. We got uh, Joni Evans, who's been at the ranch since Lane was a little bitty guy and helped us manage our ranch years ago. And she was a retired wow. master sergeant. And she, she's like the den mother. She keeps us all straight. She does our admin, our, our, a lot of our operations, our scheduling, and smacks yeah. Lane up on the backside when he needs it, but uh, does that to me too. <laughs> She's an incredible character. Then we got Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah. You know. And then we have Jimmy Tucker. He was a, a retired warrant officer, and he's our ops guy. And he's he's the quiet, confident leader, but does tremendous stuff. But he's a warrant officer, so we are always like looking for him in the military. You never knew where the warrant officers. They're always like disappeared at the motor pool or something. No, no, I'm just I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> no, great oh. staff, and then we got Gary, famous Gary O'Neill, a uh, former Army Special Forces Ranger, kind of a, a folk hero in, in the military, and he's come on board as, on our board member. But he comes up to a lot of classes, and he's a, he's a wealth of knowledge as well. And then we have a lot of wow. other people helping out and great board members. Uh, former Cur Colonel Brett, Brett Gordon's a, a, on our board member, uh, RJ. Wow. It, you know, it's incredible. The people that want to help support Camp Cowboy and everyone that's around it. And I know there's some phenomenal sponsors as well. You know, we we're talking a little bit about the brain injuries, but would you talk a little bit about, um, Scott, would you talk a little bit about some of the sponsors that just help you every day and, and, and that show up? So I told you I went to New Mexico Military Institute. So we have that we call the NIMI New Mexico Military Institute Mafia. <laughs> um, so but. I went to school. They're all very successful. But uh, Chris Gregory owns Heartland Horseshoeing, one of the best horseshoeing schools in the country. He comes down, you know, every year and spends a lot of time with with us in the class and teaches farrier classes and just donated money and effort and, and just an incredible human being. Um, we have Chuck Ferry, who who, who uh, is a retired fireman, and has a, a, a fire service that he builds tremendous things. He donates money every year. We have uh, 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 John Barry Barry Law Firm. Uh, they, they've been a big sponsor to us every year and, and they also provide legal services for veterans and, and anytime a vet has a help, the Barry law firm, you know, jumps right in and helps those guys. They're incredible. We have Cargill, Cargill feed, which is part of Neutrina. They donate feed to every class, um, uh, to help some of our horses. They've been a great sponsor for six years now. Um, locally we have our local Bush's chicken that brings out food for our, 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 our parties and, and, and donates money for us. Um, we have Murdoch's is a new sponsor that just uh, opened up a store here in, in Colleen, Texas, and uh, they helped us out this year with our ball and, and uh, great people. And then we have a, a, a cool sponsor that's a little bit different than most, but U.S. Vets MC, it's a, it's a biker, military biker group that's been for every single class we've had from the get go. They have brought some of their biker group guys have come through our class, but they've donated a check for every single class. They've wow. sponsored a student to go through every class. It, it costs about $1,500 to bring a student through a class. We do about 20 students per class. So you kind of add it up. You can see what it costs to get everybody through. But the U.S. vets have been there from the get-go, and, and they show up to classes. Our, our students do, do teach-backs for them. They've been an incredible sponsor throughout. Um, we have American Chevrolet that's donated some money every Christmas at our Christmas ball and and, and bought a lot of auction items and, and just – a lot of our neat Nimi Mafia guys show up every year and help us out, but uh, it's the old schoolmates that have, have helped out, and then the local community. Heights Lumber has wow. been a, a member of us, a local yard here. They've donated money, time, effort, and you name it. So I'm probably missing somebody. If I did, I apologize because I'm 
jumping off the cuff and and uh, but the folks, did I miss anybody, Lane? Um, Sports Clips. They're they're a big sponsor to us as well. Oh yeah, Sports Clips. Yeah. Yeah, I can't forget the, the Logan, Edward Logan. Yeah, he's sponsor us from, from the get go too. Um, and he's a national, big national company. And it's nice to have a national company that comes out. He, he donates nice trips for us for our, our auction. He's donated cash, money, and, and he comes out every year too. So awesome. him and his uh, Christy. Edward and Chris have been great friends of us, um, the owners of Sports Man, Sports. that's wonderful. And we're going to talk a little bit about the gala in part two and, and all the unique people that help support that as well, from the guitars to all the other memorabilia. We'll talk a little bit about that in part two. So there's a lot coming up in part two for sure. Um, so, Scott, when I was there, you were talking that some people that go through the, the, the camp, they miss it. And sometimes they just need they have a day where they just drive out and they just kind of want to be on site. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, sir. So our ranch is open seven days a week and our classes are only Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But I'll tell you on the weekends, you'll see three or four Camp Cowboy former members coming out here and say, can I just come out and feed a horse or can I clean a stall or can I go pet a horse or can I go ride? But it's become like a community center. Every single day, there's somebody from Camp Cowboy out at the ranch and, and we have no problem with that. They want to come out here and help out. And, and they sometimes just come out and volunteer. If we have to fix a fence or go fix a water gap or we have to round up the cows, there's always – if Lane says, hey, today we're going to round up and brand cows, there's 10 guys from – and gals from Camp Cowboy that want to show up and do I that. I love that, man. So there's – every single day, it's, it's kind of a little community center. Man, now. I love it. And, you know, Lane, you're teaching them life skills. They can go work on other ranches. You're teaching them leadership and – you know, I, I love that part of it. Would you talk a little bit about what you do in class that helps them transition um, in, into another job? Well, you know, um, it's, you know, it, the class is Camp Cowboy, not Camp Equestrian. And so, though we do a lot of stuff with horses, uh, you know, if we've got fences that need to be fixed or we're going to go brand cows, as Dad was saying, or – Dad sinks a excavator in a pond. We got to go pull him out. That actually happened. I didn't even bring that up. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> um, there's there's always something, and so there's all sorts of different things that we that we do on our ranch, and so we just kind of try to get them to dabble their fingers in every every bit of it, uh, r regardless of of what we're doing. If we're having to fix water lines or you know different stuff, we just try to get get them pointed in the right direction a lot of the students um and i kind of go into my own little side side group is uh, my girlfriend calls them my goons but it's a you know a bunch of young enlisted guys that would otherwise be hanging out in the barracks and, and drinking uh and we we bring them out to the ranch and they're, every night they're out here and they're hanging out and you know at any given time you come out here there's probably five or six of them here isn't that great, um, man? You got a place for them to go yeah. and a place to belong. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yes. and try to teach a little bit of ranch management. Um, we do some business classes for them. You know, this is the cost of hay, this is the cost of feed, insurance, um, how you make money in the horse business, this is how you make money in the cattle business. Um, we, we try to teach a little bit of business classes for them for every class as well, with the hope that, you know, maybe someday they want to have their own ranch or. You know, it, it do my heart great if they open up another Camp Cowboy somewhere else. Anybody that ever wants to open up one, I'll give them the keys to the kingdom because the more vets you can help, the better off we all are. So it's not just veterans. It's first responders. We have paramedics. We have you name it. Um, they've gone through the class. So it's veterans, their families, first responders. Too. Man, I love that. And if they want to be a sponsor, they just go to CampCowboy.org. Or if they have somebody that might want to be a participant in a class, they can still go there and message and get with y'all. Um, Cause you're so accessible and, and, uh, but campcowboy.org. Um, so I can't believe, uh, it's getting close to the end of, uh, part one of our show. Um, but I just can't say enough good things of being there. And, and I love the tour of the ranch. Would you speak just a moment or two, uh, Scott, to wrap this up about the tour you gave me about riding through the ranch and your plans as you acquire land It's for more projects with, with the guys and the gals, uh, you know, the military veterans. Yes, sir. So right now we have uh, two ranches side by side. Um, one's probably 275 acres and the other one's probably up to around 1,100 acres. And that's where we run our cattle operation. Um, we've been refencing it and adding adding more you know, projects over there, putting creeks and ponds and water areas. Um, 
at the end of Camp Cabell, we usually take the, the, the group over and try to either do a cattle drive or a, or a trail ride, a kind of the end of the camp you know, graduation ride. But we also, um, throughout the, the, the year, we'll do some big trail rides over there. We invite all the previous cowboy, Camp Cowboy people and anybody that get a horse. We'll do a giant group trail ride on the property over there, but it's full of creeks and trails and ponds. Um, we have that land across here, the, the horse detachment from Fort Hood, the first cab guys, they like to bring bring their horses over there and get them out of the, the arenas over there and do some big trail rides and get their, their new horse guys some, some saddle time, wet blanket time, and the horses. Right. So um, we, we use that land for our community. A lot of the military guys from Fort Hood come over there and do their what they call cab rides or their spur, I'm sorry, spur rides. And it's like a two-day event where they actually do land nav and they, they they ruck march and they do crazy activities to earn their spurs for the cavalry. We've done that in the past. Um, Fort Hood has brought some guys over. We've done some leadership classes for the chain of commands where we actually put them on, on, on horses for the day or put them in, in events for the day where they actually uh, have to cross talk about different leadership uh, exercises. Um, we've done that and we've all different corporate guys. So, if a corporate company wants to come out here, we'll use the vets and we'll put them through a one-day corporate exercise, team building exercise, where they'll have to use horses for that activity. Well, there you go. If you're a corporation watching this show, just go to campcowboy.org and get in touch with them. That sounds like just a great opportunity and, and one that won't be forgotten. That's so, so great. Well, Scott and Lane, thank you all so much. And please thank everyone there for what you do uh, for all the first responders and, and for the cowboy culture. And uh, uh, we'll uh, appreciate y'all being on part one. We're going to do part two. And, and thanks again for all you do. And Scott, thanks for your military service. And thank you for watching the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you to all the great sponsors of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. If you or your business is interested in being a sponsor of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, please call our office at 830 992 1786 or visit our website, cowboyentrepreneur.com.